And now onto our dinosaur of the day, Alito Pelta. This was a request from Victrix via our Patreon and Discord, so thanks. As we mentioned, it's an ankylosaurid. It lived in the late Cretaceous in what is now California in the U.S. It was found in the Point Loma Formation. Point Loma is a really cool spot. Mm-hmm. Good hiking to be done and some fun tide pools. And some dinosaur bones. <laughs> <laughs> Being an ankylosaurid, not too surprising. Probably if I say it walked on all fours, it had a bulky body, it was low to the ground, it was covered in armor, it had spikes, it had a long tail, and a relatively short neck. Sounds like an ankylosaur. Yes. And it had shoulder spikes that are like handles. If you were to ride it, that was <laughs> per Garrett's suggestion there. Well, because in the San Diego Natural History Museum, there's a big bronze Alito Pelta with the little spikes on it. And I can't remember if you're allowed to sit on it, and I did and held its little spikes, or if I just dreamed about it. But... I don't think you're allowed to sit on that one. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I thought about it so much that I can't even remember if it happened. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, we've seen it at the San Diego Natural History Museum, and they're the ones that have all the bones. Unfortunately, no skull was found, and also no club tail. Yeah, it's sort of like the... Almost like that Zool piece of the big middle piece that was on display where it's like all the armor sort of articulated mm. into like a splayed out, like a spatchcocked turkey mm -hmm. <laughs> middle part. <laughs> that's, Flattened. Yeah. That's like what they found of Alito Belta. It's not nearly as good of condition as Zool, but the same sort of general shape and orientation. Mm -hmm. And based on its unique armor, that's why they think it's an ankylosaurid, even though we don't have a club tail. Or a head. The two most important parts for identifying an ankylosaur. Yes. But it did have thick shoulder scutes and long spikes and polygonal scutes that covered the pelvis. But its shoulder scutes weren't like massive spines sticking out the sides like you see on a notosaur. No. They were like handles. <laughs> <laughs> now, ankylosaurids... They were covered in armor, and again, they had the club tails and the broader heads compared to notosaurids. So. Which had no tail clubs, which yeah. is why they're not quite as cool. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Alito Pelto is estimated to be about 16 feet or 5 meters long and weigh 2 tons. Originally, it was estimated to be almost 20 feet or 6 meters long. And actually, according to the San Diego Natural History Museum, also known as the NAT, this specimen was about 4 feet or 1.3 meters tall and about 13 feet or 4 meters long. So a bit of a range there. The type and only species is Alitopelta kumsi. The fossils were found during construction work in 1987. There was a skeleton found by a ditch that was being dug for a sewage pipe. They found a partial skeleton with osteoderms. Brad Riney, a paleontologist at the NAT, found the dinosaur and notice the dark brown fossils. There's a lot of marine invertebrates in the formation, as well as a femur, right lower jaw with teeth, and neck vertebra of a hadrosaur. Riney had also found those nearby hadrosaur fossils. As for Alita Pelta, it had a distinct leaf-shaped tooth, which is how they knew it was part of Ankylosauria. And the San Diego Natural History Museum got the specimen, and it was called the Carlsbad Ankylosaur for a long time. The holotype includes teeth, fragments of the shoulder, part of the arms, part of the pelvis, both legs, four to five partial vertebrae, fragmentary ribs, and osteoderms, including the pelvic shield and the cervical half ring on the neck. Yeah, I love cervical half rings. Those like armored necklaces is how I always think of them. Yeah. And they found eight teeth. They think it was probably an immature specimen based on its unfused astragalus that's in the around the ankle. The partly fused scutes and unfused neural spines. The fossils were described in 1996 by Walter Coombs Jr. and Thomas DeMare, but they weren't named at the time because they thought it was an indeterminate notosaurid with similarities to Edmontonia, Panoplosaurus, and Stegopelta. But then Alitopelta was named in 2001 by Tracy Ford and James Kirkland. And when it was named, it was the only formally named dinosaur from California. Yeah, it should be our state dinosaur. Well, <laughs> that ship has sailed. I know. <laughs> You're just biased. <laughs> I am. 
The genus name Alitopelta means wanderer shield. It's named for its armor and the fact that the skeleton had traveled a long way because where Alitopelta was found, way back when it died, what's now Carlsbad, California, was off the coast of what's now the middle of Mexico or just north of the middle of Mexico. Yeah, it was very much underwater. Yeah, but then tectonic plates shifted and it ended up in California. Lucky that there was really anything left after all this tectonic activity. The geology of California, especially the coast, is crazy. (laughs) A lot has happened in the last 66 million years. Yes. Well, you could say that about all of Earth. Well, but California is like this thing where it was like folding the side of the continent back on top of itself in crazy (laughs) ways and it's nuts. But we got a lot of this dinosaur. That's good. And then the species name is in honor of Walter Preston Coombs Jr., Coombs I. And again, it's based on its armor that they thought it was an ankylosaurid. Ford and Kirkland did because originally it was thought to be a notosaurid. But Ford and Kirkland further prepared the skeleton and they found these unique features. So they named it originally based on a number of features, including the teeth being wider than they were tall, having a long femur or thigh bone compared to the tibia and fibula, having a pelvic shield with polygonal osteoderms, a large short pointed spike in the shoulder, and then some other details in those osteoderms. And they said the pelvic armor had superficial similarities to stegopelta. They wrote, quote, The pelvic scutes of Alitopelta are uniform in shape, although of different sizes. The scutes of Stegopelta are more irregularly shaped and are larger in relative size to the ilia than are those of Alitopelta. Later, I guess 14 years later, in 2015, Victoria Arbor and Phil Curry said that Alitopelta was unique in the osteoderms, including having hexagonal pelvic osteoderms, and the cervical half ring was made of osteoderms that were fused to an underlying bony band. Some scientists had considered Alita Pelta to be a nomum dubium, but Arbor and Curry found it to be valid. And really, when it comes to ankylosaurs, if Victoria Arbor says it's valid, she's kind of the boss. (laughs) (laughs) She knows her ankylosaurs. (laughs) She does. And she usually classifies them based on heads, too. So it's pretty good that this one didn't have a head and she still thinks it's valid. Yeah, it is. What's really interesting about this specimen of Alita Pelta is that it formed a mini reef. Oh, weird. Yeah, because it probably died inland and then got swept away. So it bloated and floated out to the sea via stream and then sank to the bottom belly up. It was bloated with gas, swept away. Eventually, it decomposed or it got eaten by scavengers and then sank to the bottom of the water. Something popped it so that the gases escaped and it sank. Exactly. And once it sank, it became this miniature reef it's so weird it was found with mollusks like oysters and spiny oysters attached to the bones and ammonites and gastropods near the skeleton (laughs) and these made most of the limb bones hollow and there were a lot of shallow pits on the osteoderms and ribs it's like making an artificial reef out of sinking a ship except instead of sinking a ship it's a sinking ankylosaur yeah a little bit (laughs) they also found fossilized oysters and a shark tooth with the bones Interestingly, other notosaurids have been found in marine sediments, and some are known only from marine strata, including Notosaurus, Stegopelta, Papasaurus, and Neobrarosaurus. But Alitopelta is the first ankylosaurid to be recovered from marine strata. Yeah, that's true, because even Borealopelta, which was maybe not marine, but aquatic, <laughs> was also a notosaurid, not an ankylosaurid. Yes. I'm trying to remember if Zool, I think Zool wasn't in a marine sediment though. Yeah, so pretty cool. And I'm glad that there are dinosaurs from California. It's a good one. You're just saying that because it's an ankylosaur. <laughs> it's a cool ankylosaur too though. It is. I like the mini reef part. Yeah. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash I know dino or click the link on the left. 